Okay, so let's get started. Um, my name is Ralf Staunemeyer. I'm a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of South Africa, which is in, <laughs> in South Africa, in um, Johannesburg. Um, I have also have a base in Berlin, so which is, makes it a bit more easy to come here. Um, my research is actually in intrusion detection and like traffic mining. I do a little bit artificial intelligence. So this is what I mainly do. This is what I get research money for. Um, I also do network and system monitoring. I wrote a book on this, um, mainly focusing on the singer. Um, but this is sort of a hobby. And Android became a hobby as well. Um, Basically, when Android came out a couple of years ago, I told everyone, look, don't use that. That's really bad. <laughs> so if, if you care about security and privacy, this is, it, it, cannot, it cannot be fixed. So, um, but people keep on using that. And even like my wife, my kids, oh, look here, Android, very nice. So um, if I care about security and I would like to help them, the only thing I can do is actually see what can be done with reasonably afford. So actually take the source code and custom build a system where Wi-Fi and GPS and camera is not working anymore because I removed all the firmwares. It's not really, doesn't really work. Um, okay. Um, if you try to look me up, I'm no aircon. So why I'm no aircon? That comes from no air conditioner because I worked two years at the University of South Pacific, which is in Fiji, and I had no air conditioner in my office. So I was really unhappy about that. <laughs> That's why I'm no air con. So um, I prepared that talk together with Herbert Brown, who is a journalist. So, and, um, so his interest was more like on the usability, what can be done, which is basically usable, and my interest basically is on the techniques. So, um, so unfortunately, there was no, not funding for two people, so I'm here alone. <clears throat> you can find the slides and some information. I'm actually preparing a website on this, and lots of my notes in properly written form, you will find them under Werther Android. Um, if you go to the um, an early version of this talk, I gave us a keynote at the DroidCon this spring. So this is an enhanced version of that talk. And um, you can find the slides and some video footage and um, a lot of advice and how-tos and, and links um, going to Android uh, DroidCon. And then you will find a link on how to secure your device. You can open that just now and follow the lecture if you're interested. So um, what's the problem? Um, you, you basically have a smartphone. You put all your data on that phone. You have your address lists. Um, whoever you call, you have documents on there, you start putting your um, private keys on there if you would like to have secure email. So there's a lot of stuff on there and phones were not built um, actually to protect that um, from the beginning because a GSM is broken, uh, the phone's design is not, not for security, we need to build new phones to have secure phones. Um, Okay, we have some Linux, but then there's some, some Java app running on the Linux on the Android phone, which is called Android, and that's not built for security and privacy too. So it's um, in the light of the NSA revelations last year, it's actually using mobile phones in general a really bad idea. So, okay, but what can we do? So um, this spring, there was like a huge um, announcement. There's that black phone developed by that guy who invented PGP. So, hey, that, that, that phone runs Android. And at that time, I thought, OK, that's really odd. They may build a secure phone with a sort of privacy OS, but that's Android. That's a custom Sam, Samsung. Oh, no, that was not the Samsung device. But anyway, there are crypto phones that actually do use the Samsung um, S2 or S3. And uh, so they cannot make custom firmware. So they cannot be really, really secure. So, um, so actually, you can take your Android device and get very close to what the crypto phone offers. So um, let's see. Um, the standard crypto phones are very expensive. They are around 2,000 euro, or they, you can get them cheaper, but you have uh, costly subscriptions. 
They're not necessarily compat compatible with other. If you want to be build a good, good crypto phone, it will only work with the good crypto phones from the same vendor. That's a problem. So, and uh, a key problem is who do you want to trust? We learned um, you cannot trust countries, you cannot trust companies, you cannot trust politicians. And um, so my conclusion is basically you can only trust individuals and um, you need to tr trust your guts somehow. You know someone who's coding something, you can decide if you want to trust that person or not. Um, it's pretty bad at the moment. Um, so what do we need to look at to actually fix the holes? So I stopped from the bottom, uh, started from the bottom, basically looking at the GSM network which got known a lot of floors. Then we look at the cell phones. There are two operating systems on the cell phone. Basically, one is the baseband operating system, which is handling the GSM connection, own processor. Um, and then we have a second operating system, which is then in an Android device, the Linux. And then there's this program running on it, which is Android. So uh, we look at the baseband security and firmware. We look at the Android OS itself. Then a huge problem is the whole permission management is broken. And if people start fixing it, um, it gets another iteration, like now with Android 5, basically it's broken again, and even worse. So <clears throat> then we have uh, data encryption was introduced um, not too long ago with Android. And for, it's a, it's a, it uses dmcrypt, which I consider not too bad, but the implementation breaks it completely. It, it, it's useless, the encryption. So there's a good, there's the good dmcrypt doing a good job, but um, it, it doesn't work as a secure storage. So um, then we have the communication tools itself from um, mobile, for normal mobile phone uh, um, communication, which cannot be secured. Then we can go the route over voice of IP, a different messaging services, video streaming. There are options and I would try to point them out. So then we have search and browsing. There are a couple of serious issues with that. And then the Google apps itself, it's like, I can only say remove them. There's no chance to do anything good about it, um, except that they are very nice to use. And then finally, we have secure wipe, which is ess essentially, <clears throat> because uh, mobile devices can, can get lost easily. Um, OK, so GSM is broken by design. Um, First off, the obvious thing, you have two identifiers, you're not permitted to really change them. One identifier is um, bound to the device, and the other one is to your SIM card. Um, the device one, it's like a MAC address um, of an Ethernet card, so um, you cannot change that one. This, the SIM card you can replace, and then you also have identifiers, at least at, uh, at an Android device, which is actually bound um, to the... To the um, to the Android version. Okay, but that's not GSM network. So then you can compromise the base, base stations. Um, GSM got a gen, like a general problem that um, the, um, the mobile device need to authenticate itself to the uh, base station, but not the other way around. This is why IMSI catchers work that someone who says, um, I, I'm a base station, all mobile phones who receive this as the strongest signal will start logging in to that um, other mobile phone who says, I'm a base, base station. And if um, that mobile phone forwards the connections, it's completely transparent. And um, uh, then you can say, OK, there's crypto. OK, but um, that first generation GSM crypto is completely broken. There's not much security in there anymore. And anyway, if you can fake a base station, you can say, disable crypto. And you will not realize that. The initial GSM standards said, OK, this needs to be at least forwarded to the user operating systems, but was not implemented. So basically, you, you cannot figure out if you're using crypto on a mobile phone or not, at least to the, the, the connection which goes to the base station. You, do, you cannot even figure out if you're actually using a valid base station. So then you have silent SMSs. It's possible to send. Um, um, control messages um, similar to SMS to a mobile phone um, and they do not appear on the device. You cannot see I received a silent SMS, but it can be used actually to enforce um, location information and these as kind of SMSs can also be used to run exploits or receive sensor information from the basement operating system. Sensor information means you have a GPS in there 
you have, you have a camera in there, you have a microphone, and that can be um, accessed on, um, on certain versions, so uh, where exploits are known, but you basically can run exploits via silent SMS. So, and then I mentioned that already, we have insecure channel encryption. Um, everything basically which is below 3G, or maybe including 3G already, um, is insecure. You, when there's nothing that can be done it, about it except um, disabling it. So, um, then we have the uh, hidden operating systems. Okay, there's, there's, um, you cannot have your own operating system. Uh, 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 okay, there's a real-time operating system handling voice calls and the connection to the GSM network. Um, you cannot have your own operating system. It needs to be certified. And um, there's not much happening on basement operating systems. Basically, there's the same firmware which was like uh, created in 2007. It was sort of works, and it's on many, many devices. So, and there are a couple of, just a couple of versions depending on different um, phone vendors. But basically, it's most of the time the same, um, the same operating system, and it's completely closed source. You have no idea what's going on, the, on there, and um, bugs are not fixed. So once there's an exploit known to whatever access specific information via, for example, a silent SMS, um, it's not getting fixed, and you have no chance to fix that on, fix that on a phone. Um, so you have remote access to sensors and memory, which is serious, um, especially memory. Um, and many, many um, uh, smart devices here basically have, the, have shared memory, which is shared between the base, basement operating system and your Linux running on it, or whatever the user operating system it is. That, that means that from the basement processor, you can access memory, um, uh, which you're using as a, a running applications in. So, um, this, the, this is a serious problem. Then, um, um, in, a, in a cell phone, you also have custom firmwares. So, um, if you, if you, most of you might, might, will use Linux, you have some, some VLAN cards where you need to have a custom firmware, like, loaded in to actually use that. So, mobile phones are full with that. You have, 10, 15 firmwares which are loaded to these devices to make wireless LAN, Bluetooth, NFC, uh, near field communication camera working. So elsewise it will not work. And there are no open source variants and um, these firmwares are not fixed unless um, something breaks. And it's very difficult to say um, if they contain backdoors or not. So most probably they do. So my advice basically would be, the first advice would be retire 3G. Don't use three, uh, two, 2G on, on your phone. Use everything which is behind three and a half. The problem is I think the only devices I ever saw which got a disable 3G button was a Blackberry and was only in certain versions. So um, most firmwares do not even forward the information or give away the information. Um, and, um, um, uh, so, um, the idea would be basically, if you are in a inse have an insecure connection or you use a 2G network to basically go into flight mode or disable the phone. Um, that's possible, but it's not implemented yet. Then skip non-free firmwares, also very, very, very difficult because like on certain services like wireless LAN, you need to mm, skip, skip that. The problem is wireless LAN is in some cases more safe than use, using GSM, which creates another problem. Um, so basically, you would need a separate device to make a connection to the GSM network. Um, so uh, then, what do we have? Ah, okay. You can start monitoring basement activity. That's pretty interesting. There's the Android IMSI um, catcher detector, which is pretty fresh out there. It's an open source project which try to aim to detect IMSI catcher activity. Um, so it means like a fake base station activity um, on your phone. So you can keep this running and try to see if there's a fake base, base station out there, which is for demonstration maybe a good idea when you know when you should try to switch off your phone. Or, um, or you can also try to figure out uh, silent messages, but only a small subset of these messages are detected at the moment. So um, Android IMSI catcher, detector project. I can really recommend you um, to look at it. Um, so what else? Um, Harding Android, okay, that's, that's, a, <laughs> that's, 
that's a, it's a tough thing, um, and it, basically it's not possible. But um, what most people can actually do is like to, to set some settings, for example, like disabling um, um, location information, that's possible still on all versions, and I can really recommend this unless you actually need it. Um, then disable text and voice input. Uh, basically, you type in your password, and at the same time, you're uploading with it, um, with a um, uh, with that um, text detection mechanism, you upload basically all the time your everything you're typing. You have a keylogger in there, um, because that word to the suggestions. There's no dictionary on, on that on that um, on that cell phone. You basically upload to Google all the time what you're typing in. So every password you type into your Google device and your Android device, there's a high risk you actually uploaded um, your password somewhere. Um, and it even gets worse for, for, for example, wireless LAN passwords. Hey, Google backs up your system. So that means they have every SSID um, which you ever logged in. Hey, and they also, on your device, there is the password for the wireless LAN stored in plain text. Hey, and Google backs up that too. That's nice. So basically, they have all SSIDs you've ever been to, and at the same time, they have all passwords you logged in. And that's all in plain text. So, not a good idea. So disable back backup and restore. Care yourself for backup and restore. And then there's something very nice because it's very very easy. Um, Android devices are partially identified by unique identifier device name, which is like Android and then some long number. Hey, you can change that name. Why not calling that localhost? So how many devices are there which are localhost? So that's great. So change that into localhost really easy, and you make it a little bit more difficult. So Android permission management, are, that's really, really bad. So OK, everyone knows, like, basically, you install an Android application, and then it's really it's unclear until you receive that long list what kind of permissions are needed. So And then the requests are getting really excessive. Basically, you can decide, do I want to install Angry Birds or whatever? and um, give all my permissions away, or not. Um, descriptions are, are completely unclear, in my opinion. And um, Google never really thought about like revoking. So if I install something, and we say, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. That program doesn't need access to my address book. I would like to disable that. No, I, they can even modify it. So that's no. That's unreasonable, but it cannot get, cannot be fixed with a custom Android build. Um, so, and it even gets worse. So, um, for limited time, um, Android, like uh, Google had in the Android source, source code, um, uh, code which showed okay, there is some development to revoke uh, permissions. Really, really nice. And once, like some guys, it was Suyano Genmod, activated this, and there was some app out there called AppOps to get access to that privacy guard um, 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 uh, snippets. Google said, hey, we take away funding from you, Suyano Get guys, unless you remove that again. But the code was in there, and what happened? Hey, it's not in the code anymore. So the sources do not include the privacy guard anymore. And at pretty much the same time, that was like so this spring somewhere, um, Google also updated the Play Store. The, the Play Store go, contains a library, and that library basically is able to change any permission without any notification. So, um, so basically, you lost control completely once you have a, de a recent version of Play Store on your device, because Google can decide which permissions are given and change that later without notifying you. So, okay, that's Google, but what about um, the, the developer who's requesting permissions? Now, there are a couple of classes which contain a lot of fine-grained specific permissions which get shown um, um, when you uh, install your Android app. The thing is, um, the f first thing is that within that group, developers are able to extend their rights within an update without, without you getting notified. So 
um, you install your Android app, which got a, the right to read your contacts, and only that. You install that right to read your contacts. Okay, that's related. I would like to send a message. I would like that my contacts are shown. But then the next update, which is got installed automatically, gives also permission to modify and delete. And you will not figure that out. Yeah? It's just getting changed, and that's the developer who's, who's changing that. Not, not, not Google. Google can change any, anything. The developer got, is sort of limited, like sort of caged, but it's, um, it's, 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 it's massive. If um, there are applications basically request a tiny permission in every group, but which means they can do anything with the next update. Because changes within that group are free. That can be done. So, and then there's another very funny thing. Since Android 4.8.19, there is no option anymore to revoke permission to network access. Hey, network access is granted automatically for all applications you install on your device, which is sort of dodgy. Depends on your Android version. You have the app ops um, application, which can, between 4.3, 4, I think so, activate um, the, the privacy guard modules. And in some CyanoGet versions, you have privacy guard 2, which are not maintained anymore, but that's all between um, version 4, 4, 3, 4, I think so, and 4, 8, 19, which I can sort of recommend if you would like to have the easy path try to get a CyanoGit um, mod version where the privacy guard is activated. And then you have the X-Privacy module, which is part of a, um, of, a, of a framework. You can also consider to look into that, but it's pretty complex. So file system and file, file encryption. So, um, OK, I mentioned there's the, OK, um, you have your device, two operating systems, there's a Linux running, and there are, a Java program, which is Android, and you normally can only stay in that Java program. So um, the encryption, when you enable encryption on your Android device, it only encrypts one folder, which is the data folder, which should contain um, most of the private information, but not the SD card, not the whole device. It's that one data folder. So the device will tell you, oh, OK, you need to activate a PIN or a password um, actually to, um, to get access to that storage, which means most people might use a pin. So you have a DM, DM crypt with a, <laughs> with, a, with, a, with a pin protecting the, the secret key. Hey, that's four numbers. So that's not secure at all. You can break that in no time. So that pin is asked every time when you unlock your phone. When you look, you need to put then the pin again. I can say, okay, I'll take a password. Um, but the thing is, you need to type that in every time you unlock your phone. Now, most people will start, okay, let's take a small, short password. Hey, everything that's beyond, like, around six characters or less, or maybe seven, eight, can also be broken in no time. You need something long, random. You cannot remember that anymore. You need to put it every time you unlock your phone. It's unusable. So the thing is, the, tr the trick is, if you manually change the DM, um, DM crypt password, having a root shell on your Android device, hey, you can change that. Hey, your pin still works. But actually, the DM crypt partition is, um, is with a long password, which you need to enter one time when you boot your device. But that was disabled. You can do it manually, but you need a shell to fix that. And then you have a secure password, at least for that one partition. So set, place your important information in there. <laughs> so um, forget the GSM. You cannot fix it. I would tend uh, to take the root voice over IP. The thing is, most voice over IP providers, no, basically all of them, don't offer secure connections. So you need to have a handshake, and you have a streaming protocol, which ensures like the, the stream is secured. Hey, and basically no provider offers a connection to other networks if it's encrypted. The only solutions I saw is like Cisco VPN uh, so solutions. Then you have basically a secure connection until your, your, your voice over IP provider, that can, that can do it. I have access again to the data. So um, there are really not trustworthy service provider out there. That's my guess. 
And um, so there is something called the OCN project, open source telephony network. I recommend you to look into that. You can set up your own um, voice over IP box um, at home or connect to the more open network. Um, w works nicely. So our video chat is still worked on, on OSTN, but it's a question of time. I guess it will happen this, this year, beginning next year. So, but you cannot connect to other networks. That's a serious problem. So what do we have else? Um, we have um, personal information management, so PIM applications like address book, um, like calendar on our device. We have obviously we have mail, we have messaging. Um, it, it's all not secure with Google services. So basically, if you would have, have something like a synchronization with your address book, either you, either you take busy, like um, a company who is offering a service like this, or you can try own cloud, build your own cloud. Um, works nicely, and there's an application called DevDroid, which is doing the synchronization between your calendar and your own cloud server. Works nicely. Hi, my wife is using that. Works. So the same with uh, GPG and um, PGP, and um, so you can use that with email. There's K9 Mail with an AGP extension, Android Privacy Guard, and um, works nicely. So OTR, I, I, I suggest you use Chat, uh, Chat Secure. I think you all know the Guardian project um, concerning mobile applications. So <coughs> if you don't, you should look that up, if you, at least if you use Android. On um, video, there's, there's um, something called WebRTC, which is a peer-to-peer -peer approach, which might enable video sessions and then telephony as well um, with a peer-to-peer -peer approach. I guess that will be interesting on, uh, on, on mobile devices in general. So uh, what else? We have secure search. Google search is broken. Um, do not use that. Um, terms of privacy are, are horrible. Um, Tor, I come back to Tor as well. I really recommend using Tor, but don't use any unsecured traffic over Tor. The exit nodes are run by the bad guys. <laughs> so if you have anything plain text running over a Tor network, you can, it's guaranteed it's analyzed. So um, make sure that your applications do not leak any personal data. So you cannot take it. A, a, a Firefox straight and run the traffic through Tor. That's dangerous. Okay, so um, I think your best bet is a moment DuckDuckGo might be a failure as well. But the nice thing about DuckDuckGo, actually, they have a hidden service. So there's um, you can access DuckDuckGo via a hidden service page. It's not really announced very publicly, but it's there and it's actually run by DuckDuckGo itself. Um, you can see that with a certificate. So and there's DuckDuckGo search and stories, which works very similar to Google search. Um, I recommend you to look into that. So um, what else? Um, if you, there's AllWeb, which is a sort of web browser which leaks very few information. Um, the thing is, most people are not prepared to use that. So they insist on Firefox. So what can you do with Firefox to increase privacy and maintain usability? Um, you can have a couple of add-ons. I recommend HTTP Everywhere it's from the Ecolic Frontier Foundations. They do a couple of nice things, uh, also the privacy badger. So HTTP Anywhere will try to set up a SSL connection whenever possible. And they make sure that actually the one you're connecting to is the right SSL certificate. That's really, really nice. Then um, you have Phony, where you can fake your identity. You say, okay, I have an Android, but I would like to be an iPhone. And hey, then you're an iPhone. You basically get web pages where the other one thinks you're an iPhone or an iPad or whatever. Um, Privacy Badger is an um, uh, IFF version of, um, of an ad blocker. Very, very nice. Pretty fresh out there. Then you have Clean Quit. Okay, that's uh, basically um, for cleaning when, you're, uh, when you close the browser. Self destructing cookies are very nice. So it gives you a cookie a lifetime of. 10 seconds, that's much nicer. So once you close your website, 10 seconds, cookies get deleted. Really, really nice. You can use the site. Once you're finished, you're finished. And then obviously there's the no script version, which I can very much recommend. Um, when you install Orbot, which is the Tor implementation, 
um, for Android. Um, there is basically the option you either choose applications which should run through Tor and the others not, um, uh, or you set it up as a proxy which you can manually configure, or as transparent proxy which actually routes all traffic through there. But you don't know if it's really secured. Last two minutes, thanks. Um, <laughs> so there's O wall that's pretty pretty new. That's an IP tables management where it can by default ban all applications from network access, even in more recent Android version. So by default, no one can access the network. And then you can decide per application. Okay, these are your um, um, requirements. Um, you get access via Tor, you get direct access, or you get special permission because you're on a voice over IP application. Really, really nice. Basically, it's an IP management um, via, um, via proper interface. It's really nice. Look at it, or wall project. So, um, fixing the holes. Okay, um, I will just rush through it. Um, basically, I made a small table um, what, um, how you can match certain applications to open source applications. The Play Store can be replaced with F-Droid. Very nice, they have only open source software on there. Then the Android keyboard needs to be removed. I can recommend the Hacker or on the Anisoft keyboard. Google Maps is OSM aren't. And okay, I will read that, not all. There's a website, I, I can announce that again. Um, where I basically linked all the applications with their short summaries. So um, I will close it now. <laughs> so my recommendations are install Cyan again mod or better replicant. Replicant project, really, really nice, but they only support a handful of devices. But if you have an old S2 or S3, they have pretty good isolation of the basement operating system um, with, a, with, a, with a user operating system. You can play around with that. It's really, really nice. Uh, look at Verta Android DroidCon. These are not the old DroidCon information. This is much, much more. And I, I hope sometime this year I will move that to a proper own website. But currently it's just like a folder somewhere. So replace Google Apps. No, there's no chance you can use, keep using Google Apps if you care about privacy. There's no way to fix that. Um, Use encryption by default, even if you know that system is buggy, you can be targeted and, and, and exploited, but you do something like um, you do tiny contribution for secure communication and you limit, um, you, are, um, you, you are sort of protecting you and others against surveillance, not against targeted attacks. So um, tell me. Um, if you think there are holes in there, give me feedback. Um, you can contact me via Twitter at uh, noaircon. I'm also on Diaspora, which is then diaspora.org, um, where that's my pod. Um, you can also contact Waterwart, uh, which is the journalist I'm working with. Okay. Do you have any questions? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's start here. Okay, can you wait for the microphone? <clears throat> okay, I'm using X privacy in my mobile phone. Yeah. And uh, as I heard, you told that X privacy is complicated, and I don't see you are recommending to use X privacy. Why you are not recommending the X privacy? Yeah, because I only recommend things my my wife who studied uh, literacy and my son who's 10 years old are able to use on the spot. So um, X privacy is very comprehensive. You can really uh, configure a lot with it. Most people will not be able really to deal with that unless you work through it, say you, to your friends, look, there's X privacy. I think it works on Android 5 as well. Maybe then this is your only option anyway. Um, but uh, it's it's Nothing for the faint of heart, that's a problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk later about that, okay? Uh, I have a question, actually, a comment and a question. Um, first of all, what do you think about the uh, black phone or efforts like that? The, the black phone. 
Of which platform? Black phone. Of, oh, the black phone. Yeah, what the I one think made, about that? The one made by Silent Circle. The one, the one made by Silent Circle. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, because they're, they're doing some of the stuff you s you are saying that Android should have by default. So encrypted VoIP services, uh, encrypted end to end by their claim. Uh, they've modified the operating system and made their own version of Android and removed some of the capabilities and, and stuff like that to, mm -hmm. to prevent privacy leaks. And from what uh, uh, Mr. Zimmerman said at DEF CON and other conferences, they are also working with NVIDIA to actually audit the baseband firmware in <coughs> that is used in the particular, their particular phone. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, the black phone. Okay. Um, Silent Circle. Then Switzerland. Now, like Zimmermann is the inventor of, um, of of PGP, and Geekphone. That's a Sp Spanish company. They actually they built the hardware. Um, I. The, the the thing is, I'm looking for a solution which I can recommend to friends which already have an Android phone. So the black phone costs. 600, 800 euro, maybe like an, like an iPhone in that, that range, and you have subscriptions you need to pay which are not cheap. No, they're included in the price. Yeah, for two years. <laughs> so then you can actually buy a costly subscription. I like the idea. I really, I, I, that was one of my triggers to look more into it. Yeah. Um, I, I like the black phone. Um, I, I don't know how the basement isolations are, like the low-level stuff. I, I'm not really sure. But privacy OS is not open yet, so nobody can really check what they are doing. It's like Zimmerman is sure one of the guys I would say, okay, I can tr sort of trust him even if I don't know him because he did some cool stuff. And okay, they might have a reason to go to Switzerland, so maybe they think about problems with the authorities. So. Um, but it's a device you need to buy, and it only works with the other people also having one. That's not for families. So that's, that's, the, that's the problem. Right, but, but when you say that Android is like very bad for privacy and is yeah. broken, yeah. what do you compare it to? Because if you compare it to iOS, from some perspectives, iOS is ba maybe more secure, uh, not more private, but more secure, but it's more, also more close than Android. And yeah. then, you, we should really compare Android to any operating system, like a laptop or desktop operating system, because that's what it is. It's, it's a portable computer in your phone that mm -hmm. also has the GSM network. So it's no longer a phone. It's actually yeah. a computing device. And people that use it make the, the personal choice to have a portable computer in their, in their pocket, right? So I, I, I is, it really, for Google. <laughs> is it really, is it really less secure than Windows? Is it really less secure than Linux? Linux has drivers, Linux has third-party drivers, has closed source <coughs> drivers, yeah. which is comparable to no, baseband. Yeah. There's bias, there's other stuff. That's Look, all all weaknesses you have with Linux, you also will have on the Android because there's Linux running on there. Um, the problem which I mainly have with, with Google and its apps that they have full control about everything and they take away the right to revoke these information. So I think it's pretty troublesome. One more question, because we are out of time. Yeah. One thing to ask and answer also to my friend. Hi. Uh, what do you think about red phone slash signal? Open source is developed by Moxie. Red phone from slash Whisper Systems on, on Android. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Nah, why? Okay. <laughs> the thing is with. Uh, Red phone and text secure, especially a whole discussion with text secure and open source and custom builds and F Droid. There's a lot of was a lot of tension there. I, as I said, there's a lot about trust, and um, the I have a problem to trust Whisper Systems, especially since they were bought from Twitter. What well, excuse me? Are you claiming that you trust less a guy like Moxie than than a guy like Philip Zimmerman? I trust more Moxie. I, I, I don't want to put Moxie okay, Marlin no, Spike no, no, on the no, table. On. Definitely not. No. No? Okay, it's, no. it, I like that guy. I disagree on certain things with him. And I have a problem with that f grab of power that Google has on these two applications, yeah. which I think is worrisome.
now open ecosystem, but the process is yeah. open. Okay. Yeah. So it's no longer controlled by Twitter in any way. And even when they force this ecosystem, the process is I, I cannot argue with that. It's like I have a bad feeling about that okay. and that's why I'm 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 staying away from it. It's it's not I cannot reason it, okay? So that, that's all. Right. Really. But I wanted to ask you some something actually more technical. At the beginning, like slide number two or three, you had the baseband attacks. Yeah. Uh, I heard I mean I heard from a couple of sources at least that there is like a, a universal zero day thing that is acting on the on the RF on mm -hmm. the radio. Yeah. Have you heard something similar? Do you know anything? Yeah, there are a couple of them. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, okay, it's confirmed. <laughs> thank you. Unfortunately, we are out of time, so thank you very much. You can speak with him afterwards.